Hey everyone, so I've started playing around with the latest Minecraft 1.5 snapshots that have been coming out recently, and I want to explore the mechanics around converting a minecart into an item drop, such that it can be collected into a hopper. Now I haven't seen too much information out there uh, about these so-called minecart collectors, so I decided to create this video to show you guys the different kinds of minecart collector designs that are available out there, and the various pros and cons of each design. We'll be going over four such designs in this video. The first uses cactuses, the second uses netherrack and fire, the third uses arrows, and the fourth uses fire charges or flint and steel. If you're only interested in one of these collectors, you can just click the annotation link on the screen to jump to that portion of the video. Otherwise, just sit back and watch the whole thing. Anyway, let's get started. The cactus-powered minecart collector is probably the most well-known and popular of all the collectors, and it's also very easy to build and use. Basically, when you make a minecart cl collide with a cactus, as I'll demonstrate here, it gets turned into an item drop, which is then collected by a hopper below. Now, the thing with these item drops is that when they're created, they fly off in a random direction. And we want to try to collect as many of these drops as we can, so that's why I have this second hopper here. Some item drops might fly away from the cactus onto the track there, so this second hopper is there to help collect those drops. So the second hopper will collect, will point to the first hopper and then into this chest here, and there you can see our cart, our chest, our cart is in the chest. Now, also, the item drops, because it's a random direction, they can also fly into the cactus. And unfortunately, uh, when that happens, the drop gets destroyed. It only happens occasionally, about 5% of the time from my testing, and I haven't found a surefire way of preventing it from happening, so for now we'll have to just deal with it. So to uh, reiterate, the advantages of this system is that there's no refilling or maintenance required, and also there's no redstone involved as well. It's also a silent operating system, so it doesn't create any noise apart from the minecart running into the cactus. And the disadvantages of this system is that, again, five, about 5% 5 of all item drops are lost, and also, uh, you can't place any actual blocks adjacent to the cactus. The, these blocks have to be air. So this might become a slight problem when you're trying to put this collector into a tight space, for example. The next collector design I'd like to show you is what I call an Eternal Fire Minecart Collector. It's like the cactus collector, except that the cart runs into a fire block on top of a netherrack block. The fire will never burn out because it's on top of netherrack, so you don't have to worry about maintaining or refilling anything. But the problem with this collector is that it has a much higher chance of destroying your item drops. So I'll demonstrate it here. And we don't, we'll just check the chest here. And unfortunately, in that case, the item got destroyed. You probably saw it get burned, run, the item drop flew into the fire and got destroyed. So to help try to prevent this, I put in an unpowered rail just before the fire, just to help to the help the cart slow down and you know reduce the chances of the item drop flying to the fire. But even with this unpowered rail, I still find that about 20% of all the item drops are destroyed. So to reiterate, uh, the advantages of this collector is no refilling required and no redstone needed. For the disadvantages again, uh, about 20% of all the item drops are lost, even with the unpowered rail there to slow the cart down. And also, uh, because it's the fire is always there, it does make a crackling sound, which might be a bit annoying for some players. Next up, we have the arrow-powered minecart collector. So this one works is that if you shoot two arrows at a minecart, one immediately right after the other, the cart turns into an item drop. To achieve this, what I've got here is a detector rail, which the card will pass over just before getting to those hoppers there. And the detector rail will trigger this monostable circuit, which will then provide two quick signals to this dispenser full of arrows here. I'll quickly demonstrate it right now. As you can see here, the, the card is now safely inside our chest. 
Now the advantage of this type of collector is that unlike the Cactus and Eternal Fire collectors, this one has no chance of losing any cards. It will capture 100% of all item drops. However, the disadvantages of this collector are quite numerous. It only has limited uses and it does require refilling. And if you, in this example, if you only had one dispenser, uh, there'll be like 64 arrows per stack times 9 stacks. But because we need to use two arrows per minecart, that reduces the number of actual usages uh, by, by half. So that leaves us with only 288 uses before needing a refill. Also, it, this collector requires a precisely timed monostable circuit that will trigger the dispenser twice in quick succession. And I found out this to be very difficult with the, at least these uh, latest 1.5 snapshots because I'm using the comparators and the behavior of those comparators has been pretty inconsistent lately. Uh, some comparators might work in one location and the other. Sometimes it'll trigger three times or maybe not at all. So it's gonna, it'll have a bit of difficulty trying to make a nice, re re uh, reliable monostable circuit for this collector. And finally, because we're shooting two arrows, it's arguably twice as noisy, uh, probably worse than the Eternal Fire Collector. The final collector I'll be going over in this video is what I call the Directed Fire Minecart Collector. Now if the Eternal Fire Collector, we made the cart run into the fire. But with this one, we will instead uh, bring the fire to the cart. And this is done using fire charges or flint and steel. Now in this collector, I've got a detector rail, just like the arrow powered one. But the difference is, instead of a monostable circuit, I have a simple delayed circuit, which will only provide one delayed signal. And that's because, uh, since I'm using fire charges in here, as you can see in the dispenser there, I only need one fire charge to destroy the cart, rather than two arrows. So I'll just demonstrate it quickly right now. If I check my chest, you can see there's my cart. Now, I don't have to use fire charges. I can replace these with flint and steel, which will work just as well except for a few uh, caveats. Um, so I will demonstrate again there. And check my chest. Oh, there's my second cart. But you'll notice that there's a bit of smoke coming out of the hopper there. It kind of looks like the hopper's burning almost. But what's happening is on top of the hopper there's actually an invisible fire that the flint and steel has set, uh, uh, set up there. It's actually burned out there. I think I will send another cart just to demonstrate this. So I'm going to go in there. And if I s the problem is that fire is going to stay there. If I send any further cards, uh, it increases the chance of that uh, card getting destroyed. So I sent four cards in total, but you'll see I only have three there. So it must be that fourth card I just sent there uh, got destroyed by that invisible fire. So you have to. That's a disadvantage of just using flint steel. Fire charters are working just fine. Uh, they don't uh, leave that sort of residual fire there unfortunately. So the advantages of this collector is that again, just like the arrow based one, it does collect 100% of all item drops. And it's even better than the arrow based one because it only requires a simple delayed circuit. The disadvantages, uh, it also has limited uses, it does require refills. But uh, since you only need one fire charge per minecart, you get uh, more uses out of it. So if you have a uh, one dispenser, you get 576 uses. With flint and steel, you get slightly more, not si significantly much, 585 uses. Um, also, the shooting sound of the fire charge is noisy. And also, again, that whole thing of the flint and steel, um, if you are going to uh, use it, you're going to need some sort of delay mechanism so you don't have any further incoming carts that will get burned by the residual fire there. So to end off this video, I'd like to show you how I was able to determine the approximate percentage of item drops that are lost from some of the collectors I've shown you. To do this, I've created this little testing mechanism to repeatedly send carts into the collectors. So here I've got all four types of my collectors there. And for each collector, I've got a dispenser that will launch carts out of there, and they're being fed each by uh, this double chest full of 54 carts in total. And right now they're not being fed down into dispensers and it's not being turned on. But when it is turned on, uh, the, car the carts will flow into the dispenser 
And then I got this clock back here, which will trigger all four of these dispensers all at the same time, and also every few seconds, and until basically all 54 cards are in each for each collector are dispensed. And then once that's done, I can check this chest, which is down here, which is currently empty, and check how many cards have been preserved by that collector. So without further ado, let's uh, test it out. And for the sake of time, I'm going to speed up the video at this point, so and uh, we'll see you in a bit here. Alright, looks like we're done here, so I'll just turn this guy off here. And let's see what we've got. So we'll start with the Cactus Powered Minecart Collector. You can see here we've actually got all the cards here, but in some cases, uh, some runs, I've seen one or two cards uh, go missing here. So this was a pretty good run. For the Eternal Fire Collector, we see that we're missing about six. That's about 10% of all the cards. I've sometimes seen uh, about maybe 13 of the cards uh, missing, so a bit more than that. But this was a pretty good run as well. For the Arrow Card one, all the cards are there. And finally for the directed fire one, using fire charges, all the cards are there as well. So yep, that's about it. Uh, that's how I got those percentages. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, any ideas for any further collector designs, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments, or, or even ways of uh, making the cactus powered uh, collector uh, work more reliably, that's also good too. Um, so yeah, that's about it for now. Uh, thanks for watching.